Hey guys, LP here, and I want to make sure you are aware of the pending longshoremen strike. Now listen, stop scrolling. This is not a, uh, this isn't fear porn. This is a simple warning. Uh, if the longshoremen do strike on October 1st because they cannot come to an agreement, it is going to cause problems with the United States that are worse than that, than that thing we cannot speak of. I've actually went out and found the interview with the president of the Longshoremen's Association explaining exactly what's going to happen and why it will happen. Please pay attention, watch the video to the end because he's going to say something that is going to get your attention, it's going to blow your mind. I am not joking. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Where the changes started? We always went for a three-year contract. When my father, when I was a young kid, we went on strike for 25 cents. 25 cents. We went on strike in 1977 for three months for 80 cents. Fast forward. Back then, the companies were lucky to make, they made millions of dollars to 10 million, 5 million. Today, they make billions and billions of dollars. They make, MSC is the richest shipping company in the world, made three times the money than Amazon. A lot of money, right? Billions. Well, one of the companies, and I won't mention his name, he took himself a Christmas bonus, $4 billion. He took it out for him and his family. Four billion. A French company, I won't mention their name, they gave all their employees 50 months salary as a Christmas gift. Now, look at that money. They have so much money, they don't even know what to do with it. They know they're building up terminals, they want to go automation, they want more money now. Get rid of these men, we don't need them no more. It's a big change going on. I've been fighting automation for years. They destroyed LA. They put a fully automated terminal at the Merce line. 800 longshoremen lost their jobs. If it was up to them, they would like to see everybody lose their jobs. Let me tell you, it's not just in the longshore. They got ships in Europe that they're building. They got one now, runs on a battery, a container ship. No crew. Somebody in an office building runs it. Goes out, goes in. They don't want anybody. They don't want to pay anybody. It's not only this union, it's all, in every union and every aspect. If they keep putting machinery to take our jobs, who's going to pay the income tax? Machines or not? Who's going to pay for the military, the roads? Everything runs by taxes. Take Easy Pass. The first time they come out with Easy Pass, one lane, and cars were going through and everybody's sitting in their car and going, what, what's that all about? I'm gonna get one of them. Today, all those union jobs are gone and it's all easy pass. People don't realize it. Everybody's got three cars, everybody got an easy pass on the window. And they go through like it's nothing. And they get billed in the mail. They didn't care about that union worker working in the booth. You go in a store today, it's self-checking. They don't need anybody to check out no more. Someone has to get into Congress and say, whoa, time out. This world is going too fast for us. Machines got to stop. Yes, we're getting smart kids out of MT, M MIT and all these places. Yeah, they're all brilliant. But what good is it if you're going to put people out of work? Who's going to support their families? Machines? Machines don't have families. You got to draw the line. These companies that work in the maritime business come from overseas. Not one of them belongs to America. They want to come into America and build fully automated terminals and get rid of American jobs. Good paying jobs that support families with medical, pensions, annuities, and pay taxes. They want to get rid of them. Where's the president of the United States? He's not fighting for us. He told in LA, he told the union, hurry up and get a contract. That's the mentality they have. They don't even know what the hell they're doing today. Well, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to save everybody's job 
when it comes to the ILA and to all the unions around the world because we're going to fight it with that alliance. I'll shut them down throughout the world to prove that we can beat them. So, yes, your answer is we came a long way. We came along so, so advanced that technology is mind, mind boggling. We never had cameras on the piers. They got a camera in every pole. They got cameras they want to put in the trucks to watch the driver driving. What is this, big brother? I'm against all that. I'm against that. A man can't even breathe without a camel looking at him. That's not right. What about, there certainly must be since 1967 elements of technology that have been good for, for the industry. Technology that's been good for the industry. Uh, that's a tough one because I got to be careful because right. I'm against automation. Right. Semi-automation is automation. It's just the back avenue had to come in and, and, and give you automation without you knowing it. But certain technology, yes, is good because computers, we get more work done with computers. We, uh, we have doubled the cargo. We have, they, if, if you look now, we have ships that are being built by these companies. Check this out. That whole 22,000 containers. It's a floating city. They had to take the Bayonne Bridge and raise it way up here so the ships could go under it to get in here to unload them. 22,000 containers. It's amazing how we came from the first ship with just a small amount of containers, 25, 50 boxes on them. So look at the future now. Look at the future in money. They went from millions of dollars to billions and billions of dollars. So the world is going by real quick. These companies are making billions of dollars. They should take us along. We brought them to where they are. Now they want to get rid of us? That's not fair. Not fair at all. And this union's been around close to 200 years. So you can see why I'm always fighting. Why do you think you haven't had to strike since then? Because you had leaders like me and the companies got smart and said, we don't want to go through another three months strike. Let's negotiate in good faith. Back then, the companies didn't make the money that we make today. So we negotiated in good faith. We went with six-year contracts. And we got a dollar raise, a dollar fifty raise for six years. It's a great, it was great. It was a lot of money compared to 80 cents for three months. But today's world, it's changing into the future. They're not making millions no more. They're making billions. And they're spending it fast as they make it. I want a piece of that for my men. Because when they made their most money was during COVID. When my men had to go to work on those piers every single day, when everybody stayed home and went to work. Not my men. They died out there with the virus. We all got sick with the virus. We kept them going. From Canada to Maine to Texas, Great Lakes, Puerto Rico, now the Bahamas, everybody went to work during COVID. Nobody stayed home. Well, I want to be compensated for that. I'm not asking for the world. They know what I want. They know what I want. And if they don't, well, then I have to go into the street and we have to fight for what we rightfully deserve. Do you think, this is my last question, do you think the threat of the strike is um, they'll, they'll, they can understand the significance of that based on the recent things that have happened, like our Key Bridge, we're from Maryland, our Key Bridge collapsing and it just stopping all the ships from being able to deliver? I'm glad you brought that up because I would like to tell you something. Okay. When that bridge fell, my longshoremen are on this side of the bridge, no work, no salaries. Biden called me up on the phone, President Biden. Harold, I got the money to build a new bridge. I go, oh, oh. what about my longshoremen? They're out of work now. They didn't cause no problem. Well, he goes, I got the money for building a new bridge and getting the, the bridge that's in the water out of there. I ask you one more time, President, what about the men whose families now have no money coming in? Well, you know, if there was an explosion on a ship, maybe I can get the money. Listen, you're supposed to be a friend of the ILA. You came to me when you wanted the AFL CIO back in. I got it for you. You called me in the kitchen, you thanked me a million times. I'm telling you, my members need, need help. 
Well, let me see what I can do. In politics, that means you're not getting it, okay? I opened up a fund with management after the first pandemic. Let me see if the, how much money's in that fund. I called them up, and they called me back. It's 300 million. Wow, are you kidding me? We put 300 million in there? Yeah. Well, I'd like to take some money out of there and pay for those families in Baltimore. Well, Harold, it's only for pa uh, pandemic. Well, what about we get your lawyers and my lawyers and any disaster, nature disaster, whatever, we can draw from it. I have no problem as long as the lawyers work it out. They worked it out one day. It cost me a million two every week to pay for their families. Plus, they were allowed to go to unemployment. And it's over now. They're back working. The ships are going in and out. I never got no help from the government. We did it on our own, management and union. That's what we're supposed to be doing, working together. And I hope we get back into that right realm. Do you think? That was in Baltimore. Right. What was the question again? Well, it was just about like, I remember like how, how significantly it impacted our businesses, like the supply chain, because I live, I live on up. the Chesapeake let Bay and something. all the ships were just waiting on Liz, the other side. Let me explain something to you. These people today don't know what a strike is. Right. When my men hit the streets from Maine to Texas, every single port will lock down. You know what's gonna happen? I'll tell you. First week, be all over the news every night, boom, boom. Second week, guys who sell cars can't sell cars because the cars ain't coming in off the ships. They get laid off. Third week, malls start closing down. They can't get the goods from China. They can't sell clothes. They can't do this. Everything in the United States comes on a ship. They go out of business. Construction workers get laid off because the materials aren't coming in. The steel's not coming in. The lumber's not coming in. They lose their job. Everybody's hating the longshoremen now because now they realize how important our jobs are. Now I have the president screaming at me, I'm putting a Taff Hartley on you. Go ahead. Taff Hartley means I have to go back to work for 90 days. That's a cooling off period. Do you think when I go back for 90 days, those men are gonna to go to work on that pier? It's gonna cost the money, the company's money to pay their salaries while they go one from 30 moves an hour, maybe to eight. They're gonna be like this. Who's gonna win here in the long run? You're better off sitting down and let's get a contract and let's move on with this world. And in today's world, I'll cripple you. I will cripple you and you have no idea what that means. Nobody does.